This is an overview of Cricket OSR in the context of Maya 2011. We have a scene and a Cricket OSR exporter written in mouse script. This is just a demo implementation. This uh, script has a big export to Cricket OSR button and uh, we're going to take a look at the resulting Python file that it will produce by enabling the open scene file in text editor option. Now we have this uh, scene file and we can see that we are importing a crypto SR module and getting a render interface out of it, then exporting all the properties of the scene, conversion from uh, camera to uh, world space, output of the light and all the scene objects uh, to the file and then calling world, world end to trigger the render. We got uh, particles with the original color and black background and these particles were created inside the volume, uh, the mesh volume uh, of the Buddha statue by using the um, extra attributes that were added to tag the object as such. Let's uh, also enable a blue background color and white color override for the particle color in order to get uh, a little bit uh, more visible result. This will produce grey particles, they are lit by a white light and uh, their color is white, it means they're scattering white back into the camera. Uh, it took 4 seconds to convert the mesh to a level set and 1.7 seconds to get 2.8 million particles out of it and the total render time was uh, 5.9 seconds. Uh, this was on a uh, true core laptop with hyperthreading on. Since the uh, shadow ink is really strong, uh, thanks to a very uh, high density, we're going to change the lighting pass uh, density by a lot of magnitude less, and um, the result will be less attenuation as light is passing through the volume, and a more transparent result from the point of view of the light source. Let's disable the opening of the text editor and enable the override absorption option which is a purple color and we'll also check the use absorption option. Now the absorption won't be the same for R, G and B channels but the red and blue channels will be uh, attenuated faster than the green one producing a green light as uh, white light is passing through the volume and losing its red and blue channels. Another feature that is exposed in the Maya exporter is the depth of field if we select the perspective viewport camera and uh, take a look at the depth of field effects. Uh, the focal distance and the f-stop are being used together with the uh, depth of field sample rate inside the crypto exporter which defines how often a particle will be drawn within the circle of confusion. The higher the value, the had the quality and uh, slower the render. In this case we're using 0 0.3 which is uh, going to produce a really uh, smooth result. 0 0.1 would be the default and it's much faster but not very high quality. And after about 24-25 seconds the uh, particles will be drawn with depth of field. Yeah, it took 24.7 seconds. Let's disable the depth of field and take a look at some of the shading modes available. These are the phase functions that define how light will be scattered by the particles as they're passing through the volume. Right now we're using a funk surface mode where uh, the normals uh, taken from the surface of the mesh that is being filled are being used to shade the particles as a solid object. We're getting specular highlights and we have multiple uh, phase functions including some for hair shading since CryptoSR supports uh, the drawing of splines as particles. Currently we are exporting a normal pass and a z-depth pass. We can take a look in the output folder um, at the z and the normal. The normal uh, has the normals encoded as RGB and the z-pass stores the distance to each pixel in the R, G and B channels uh, as real-world distance in scene units. This can be used for compositing purposes. 
We have a folder that contains the mesh obj exported uh, for filling. We have the op uh, output uh, folder, a PRT folder that can be used to store the uh, particle files and uh, the Python uh, file goes into the scene folder. There is a batch file that is used to trigger the renderer uh, easily by calling Python with the Python file. 